Hi team, Simon here from the Cooper Strip Club and uh, today is quite a, um, a full on um, demo we're going to do here. This video is going to be about stripping floorboards and we've found a really gnarly one. So there's your before, there's the stripped piece and I'm also going to be showing you how to finish it with our moisturiser but it isn't like you've ever seen our moisturiser used before. So if you've got floors and you're um, interested in stripping them or restoring them, this is worth watching. So what I'm going to do is finish taking off this um, goo so we can keep it all moving along. So this floor is probably out of some warehouse industrial building. There is heaps of stuff on here. There will be lead, there's whatever that silver paint is, uh, and these boards are carried. Now I've had the stripper on for about an hour. It's uh, what we call a long soak. If, it, if the job needs that extra time, give it to it, because why do the work yourself? And we just, if the floor was attached, to the floor still, I wouldn't have to hold the floor with one hand. Now I'm using a dragging action that you usually see me using, but I've got this time a long handled um, uh, scraper blade. These are your tungsten uh, blades. Normally when you get these they're a very short handle. This is our long handled one and they, they put on that bit of extra leverage so you're not having to put the effort on yourself. Brilliant on um, weatherboards. But, um, Arthur's asked me to collect it all to show you. So I'm not taking off unsoftened finish. The surface will be full of all sorts of nasties. The last thing you want to do with this floor is sand it. Because there'll be. I don't care if your sand has got an extractor on it, it ain't gonna all this dust. So with this, we are just we've dissolved the goo with our stripper. And we'll just take off as much as been softened. This plank here had some raw areas. some purple, whatever that is. So this is probably what you'd find in one of those brick type warehouses, inner city apartment type stuff. And there's a lot of character to be had here. So, don't make sure ready. I'll come back to that purple, see what that is. some more stripper on and then we'll have a bit of a chat about what we're going to get. Okay, so. Always keep your triggers moving. I'll just tweak the nozzle slightly to get a bit more of a flow. When you can't run anywhere because it's horizontal on the ground. Now you can, we've experimented in the past with rollers and you can use different sprayers if you want. This is our sprayer that we find really useful. And get over quite a lot of surface quite quickly. Yeah, pour it 
I just want to keep that wet. Now let's get my broad knife and see what this is. Not sure what this purple stuff is. Almost looks like someone spilled bog on the floor at one point. Yeah, it's not some photography sort of thing. So this could have been like some workshop. But it's gonna come up really well. So I'll just Okay. So I'll just let that do for its thing. The stripper is really, really thin, and we make it thin so that it absorbs. And what we're trying to do is dissolve the old finish. Now, you're not going to get a floor worse than this. This is one of the worst floor plants I've seen for a while. Um, there are other types of ones that are quite thick, the finish. Um, you'll, you, what you'll find is you'll pull lino up off the floor in the, say the kitchen bathroomy type area and you'll find um, sometimes there's glue left on the floor and we often get asked about that. Uh, also you pull up lino and there'll be like paper on the on the ground again how do you get rid of all that. So the stripper is ideal um, for those. The paper you'll find will suddenly go from a light grey to a dark grey as the um, stripper soaks through and then generally the, um, uh, the paper will just, just peel off. You'll, you'll find you'll soak it up. It's not a two minute soak like you often see with some of our thin varnishes. This one takes a little longer to get, to get through those types of ones. Now, I'll put him over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of other things to show you on while we wait. So, what have we got? We have floor glue. So this is the, um, just put it down about there. So here it is, you've, you've pulled up your um, kitchen tile, you've, um, and it's, you can see the sort of crisscross of um, the weave on the back of the tile, and um, there is this sort of contact adhesive glue, and that um, soaks into there. Um, and then this one here is um, the, there's heaps of floors like this. Now, this is your shellac. This is um, a floor that's um, not out of a warehouse. This is probably, this is out of a nice villa. And the floor was finished with shellac. It's had like a tint put into it. And this is um, vastly faster than the uh, other end. And um, so what this one I wanted to do today was show you the, the, the long soak and the short soak. So on she goes. Now, here's the guide that I'll put in the goo. Step one, take off what's on the surface. And so that's what we're doing at the other end on the big planks. Um, and we took most of it off with the first drag with the blade. Um, but we've got a bit left there to, to get off yet. Um, now, this one here, the one with the glue on, that won't be far off being ready. Do little tests and you go, okay, yep, that's all good. And then this one here, the, the floor one here, this is a little different because the floor's been worn so much over the years, there isn't much left on the surface. So we're sort of gonna um, just give this a quick scrub with some steel wool. And I've got my little blade. So I will. Just. So, um, shall I turn around the other way up? Better for your capturing the action. So, this is our little four edge blade that normally has a big handle, but we don't use the handle. We've got more control. So 
here's the the glue all that there and then we put a bit more stripper on there this is part two of the guide and then over here if I started scraping this you're really not going to achieve anything it's just going to slide around so in this case we grab a chunk of our European steel wool it's a long stranded wool which um, doesn't crumble and it's very sh uh, very sharp and what we do here is we just give this a good mash up with the steel wool so all the finish that's there has dissolved and then we just give that a wipe down often you go into big lounges on the old villas and I'll just put some more stripper on there and you'll find that there's a big clear patch in the middle of the room that's actually where um, a carpet was and around the outer edge of the room there's um, a very dark um, area about a meter wide and they call that japanning it's, uh, it's where the shellac has been um, tinted and the clear patch in the center obviously it saved finish but also um, the carpet didn't slip around so that goes back on there now we'll just leave this this is technically ready already but I want to have a look over my our friend over here so, and I'll just find my blade see what it's getting up to This blade here, the, the, they've got good bad points. One is it's they're very sharp and they're good at that first part I did, but they do have very sharp corners that can dig in. Um, and so this four edge blade we have, you'll notice hopefully there that you'll see there's a curved edge and that gives us more control over the um, scraping without digging in. Um, so I'll just put that back over there. So the curved edge means that we can move the glue without gouging into the timber. It sort of slices over the top. The stripper has softened the finish. So that thing's looking good. gloves so you don't easy to hang on to the blade Bora for a second while we're doing this. Many houses you go into, you'll see where the sand has been through, and you've um, and you the floors might have a bit of bore in it, and so the sander promptly opens up all those bore tracks, and and you get all that ugly bore everywhere. 
Um, and, and also the floor, when you sand a floor, it gets weakened, especially if it's got bore in it. So this doesn't open up any borer tracks. I don't have any bore in this to show you. I'll just cut up these while we're here. Quite a lot of leathering in there where the finish has gone in. That's a little challenge to, to get the stuff out of there. We'll show you how our brushes work on that later. We're going to have this display at our live events. So if you come to one of our home shows or one of our roadshow events where we have the hall to ourselves. You'll see this in the flesh. You have a comment oh. from Haley McKay. I have a, a 49 square meter room to do. Uh, I'm guessing it'll take forever. Not quite forever. There is a bit of time to be spent, that's for sure. There's um, a floor is, is a lot of surface. 49 square meters, so what's that? That's um, almost like what's over 10 by 4. That's a big room. A couple of weekends, probably. What's on the um, so what was the lady's first name? Haley. 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 Hi, Haley. Um, is it a shellac or is it um, a paint? Nice way to spend a rainy day. Like it's raining here in Woodville, where we're coming to you from. What better way to spend the day? Now, blade. nicely and what we're going to do is I've shown you there is there's an enormous amount of finish and you look at the alternatives yes uh, 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 the floor center man can come in and, and they do their job um, but again to plow all that off there's, there's a lot of work there as well a lot of cost a lot of sandpaper and if you grind that up in the dust, even though they've got um, sandpaper um, uh, little sucker things, and then you're only going to get a certain amount of it, and then you're going to spread that stuff around, and then the floor looks like brand new. And if that's what a person is looking for, then that's cool. But if you're looking for something a little bit more like my sample over there, then um, uh, this is a whole different way of looking at it. Now, let's come over and have these two sample for that. And I want to not forget to talk to you about how hard your floor is. I'll just turn that around. Okay. So, I've got my steel wool. And I've got my, you saw earlier, I put the stripper onto the glued part. Off that came, I put some more stripper on. I wouldn't normally need to leave it this long, but I, we got called away by the other bit of floor just like a telephone could be, or a neighbor coming along and say hi. So it doesn't matter, the, the stripper is virtually pH neutral, 
And that, what that means for you is that it's um, not going to bleach your timber. So that's now um, the part two on the guide, which is where we put the stripper on, we give it a little bit of time, and then we gave it a scrub. Now, same here. So this is the your classic villa where you'll find hallways, lounges, all those sort of rooms where you've just got a shellac. It's very thin. On it goes. So in this case, this would be a very quick job compared with... So if you were looking at time frame, the, the big gnarly thick paint job one, that's going to take longer uh, by far than, than this thin one. Um, so there's very different time frames involved. Now, um, we then go and get our flusher. And so part three on the guide is to flush the surface clean, rinse it. And we've got this blue liquid. This is a paraffin based spirit, which we use to rinse the surface. And we're going to give it a scrub with this um, pad. And hopefully you can see the sort of sparkles on there. And that's, um, I don't know if you can or not, but anyway, but there, the little grits. And I'll get myself a clean rag. Now, spray, scrub. Right. What? Now, this is not neutralizing. What this is doing is rinsing the surface clean. And if I touch that now, it's like silk. It is an unbelievable feel. Now, and it's dried quite quickly. So on the guide, it says spray scrub. So spray scrub, spray wipe. The second spray wipe bit is about liquefying it so you can get it off onto a rag. Now, um, I'll quickly do that one there, and I'll talk to you about how hard the wood surfaces. So, spray, scrub. Now the little grits aren't sanding the surface, the little grits are getting into the sanding marks that are already there. When this floor was laid, it was sanded, and that sanding is still there. Little grooves in the wood and all full of um, soft um, varnish and glue and stuff from the stripper and the little grits in the pad are like record, are like um, needles on a record player and they get into the little grooves and sweep it out. So now both of these are both smooth as and are both ready for a new finish and um, if you were to Look at this when it's wet, like this. This is the color you're gonna get if you were to put a new finish on right now. So, you know, from there to there, from there to there, it's a pretty good result. But often people want to take it a step further. You might go, well, actually, I'd like to see what other grain I can get out of that. And that's where we would look at our grain hunting process. Now let's look over here, see how that's going. Now, I was talking about hardness. So what am I on about? This floor is easily 100 years old. And over that time, the wood on the outer surface, sort of the bit that goes around, so that, those bits there, they're all um, got quite hard and dense. On the top, they've been stood on, and the outer skin of the timber is compressed and, and it's very, very uh, dense and hard. Hard through time and also hard through compression. Just like that cardboard there, every time I push down on it, I'm compressing it, the same thing there. Now, that's something to, to take advantage of. When you sand it, you remove it. So you're back into the flesh of the wood and, um, and the finishes I'm gonna suggest you can't use because the wood's too soft and open and that sort of thing. This is an ideal finish to moisturize. Now, also, when you sand a floor, you think to yourself, I've got a lot of floor. I've got all this, this thickness here, but you haven't. You've actually only got that much. 
that little bit there, that, that down before the tongue. So you, that's what they, your tongue groove. So you've got about six, seven mil there. And every time you sand the floor, you sand down, 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 and you, you, you reduce a lot of the, um, the integrity there. Now, if your floorboard is slightly bowed, it's not unusual again, you go into a place and there's actually the floor is slightly cupped, especially these wider planks, and the sander goes across and, and even sands more off there. So you do not want to sand a floor if you can help it. I saw this really good Australian uh, restoration book a few years back, and some of the best advice on floors I ever read was, only sand if absolutely necessary. It was like, do not sand your floor, strip your floor, but you'd have to have some really good reasons to sand. Anyway, I sound like I'm peddling paint stripper, which of course I am. Now, um, back to my gloves. So we had a, I'll tell you about the horse story later. You have to remind me to tell you the Shetland pony story. Let's go with the wood finish. So, over here, This is where we're now giving it a scrub with the steel wool. So I'm still using the same chunk of wool I used on the other ones. At this point it's, it's all good. Found a bit of a drill hole. Um, something there. That's all right. These residues here now are nicely softened up, which is really good. Now this sort of system here too, let's say you've, um, you've decided I want to make a bench or a dining table um, or whatever sort of table, coffee table. Well, floorboards are brilliant. They can, um, they, they, I mean I just slapped this up this morning and they will come along, they, you cramp them up, you screw some battens underneath. But this is an ideal look for that type of surface. Just when I'm finished here, you can imagine this sort of table in a cafe somewhere. And again, just note, I've picked a very challenging floorboard. I didn't go out and find just a whole big surface of that thin shellacky stuff. This, we want this on our website for people who have got some really thick, gnarly um, surfaces to get through. So, let's see what there. Just wipe any, any soft, then you might as well take it off. You'll use less rinse the flusher later. The reason we use our a paraffin based uh, flusher is it takes longer to dry than um, lacquer thinners or meths um, and also it doesn't stink. The paraffin based um, uh, rinse we used it's, it's got a sort of a candle type smell so it's quite pleasant to work with. Okay. Now, just before I rinse this, just hang in there Arthur and show some things. We're going to put the jar on, not for a coffee. Think that would be nice. I'm going to have some hot water for my green enhancing. Now, some people will go well, I don't mind a little bit of white in there, the veining. That, again, is part of its character. It, it says that once upon a time I was painted, and it tells its story. And I quite like that sort of thinking. Other people may want not to have that story. So anyway, I'm going to show you what our brushes can do. Okay, 
here's one of our uh, brass detail brushes and this has got a little bit more bite than our copper ones and this is making out because the, the paint in those grooves is actually soft already it's, it's just that the steel wool couldn't get access to it and so Probably think a toothbrush is going to take forever on your floor, but it doesn't. Jake's sending oil, which is good. So I've wetted it up again with the stripper. This sort of floor will probably take one litre per square meter in this type of thickness of floor. There is just a lot of finish to get through. Uh, where that other plank I showed you on, that um, one with the thin shellac, you'd probably get four square meters stripped per litre. So often people ask us how much does it need? And I said, well, it really just depends on the thickness of what you're stripping. I think this sort of floorboarding is a really cool way of making shelving and tabletops and all those sorts of things. And all this, people actually distress their new wood to look like this. The chains and things. Okay, so, um, stripper, flusher. Spray. So the big difference between the two planks is that the, the one with the really thick gnarly paint just takes longer to get through. But it's not like you're there, you put it on and you're off doing other stuff. Now, as we say each time we do the videos, if you have people in your world, doesn't matter where on planet Earth they are, I suppose as long as they're on the internet, you can uh, share this with them and we air freight our products worldwide. So you can go on to our website up here, Cooper's Strip Club. Dot com and have a check out our products out and ask questions if you want to know how much you need for the job. Okay, so we just wipe off that flusher. If you like the colour that it is, then you do not do this next step. If you are painting, then again, you don't do this next step. But if you're looking at trying to get more lighter grain, like I got out of the sample I did earlier, hopefully these are going to look like they're all the same lot of floorboards, but who knows. So, what did I do? I just did something without you see. That's terrible. I get my grain enhancer. Grain enhancer. This is a white crystal. Do not mix it up for sugar, because you'll probably die. So, now, 
a puff of it, it just toss it a little bit in there. And, and then you um, put like a cup of water in there. And it pretty much instantly dissolves. And we're ready to, ready to go. So, what we're gonna do is just brush it on. So remember, this is the warehouse, industrial, sort of, could even be steampunky looking stuff. This is, I reckon this sort of looks fabulous. This is the sort of floorboards I want to put into our gas works. Now the idea of this is it will um, hopefully bring up more of the natural colour. That's why we call it Green Enhancer. We, um, we used it a few times recently. We did a bench that it all sorted off, Mac the Carper, and that came out really well. You may have seen it used on metal to get rid of um, rust. But this is sort of more its use that we have for it. So we just wet that surface there, and then we then stick it on over here. Like I say, this is optional. This is if you decide there's the the colour's too dark and you want more of the original um, type colouring. And this is what you do. So on goes the water, and we leave that for usually about five minutes. So we're not going to leave that long today. Let's see what it gets up to. Get the pad. Give it a bit of a bit of a scrub that um, some of the planks are reacting better than others. Now, often when I do this, I'll just leave it on for half an hour and then we will um, just let it do its thing. The, better, the more time you leave it, the better result, I reckon. So. white there and see what comes away so we got some color removal there which is all good right up in the light there you can see there to there so that's getting a good result again your glue before and after And this a wipe. So on a floor like this, I'd probably say leave it on for half an hour, see what you get out of it. But again, this is looking really nice. This is gnarly. Yep. 
And remember all this vast amount of material that we've taken off. Often say to people with grain enhancing is that it either works unbelievably well or nothing at all. In this case, it's worked really well. I think this is a good result. Now remember, this is an industrial floor, so in here there could be oil and grease, and even though we're getting a lot of it out, there's still some that wants to hang in there. You can go back and do another uh, attack with some stripper. You can go backwards and forwards quite happily. But this whole floor is all about the reason I selected it is I wanted to show a real rustic floor. Planks that nearly look like they were firewood. Boom. So there you are there. So where are we up to? We're up to the flush. And you know, so you've seen the flush earlier and now you've seen the grain enhancer go on. What I'm doing here is I'm um, sometimes what you'll do is just use more hot you know, new hot water to uh, go over it and sometimes you can just use some flush it you know, it helps dry it off quicker too which suits my purposes today yeah that's good So they've, those three planks there have, have played ball really nicely. And this one here is a little bit darker. I would probably go with a bit more stripper, but it may end up being that that's the way it is. Interestingly, I'll show you in a minute. I think I know why it is what it is. It's a bit like archaeology, this work. People often wonder why. A thing is what it is, and then you dig into it and you find out. exciting to watch. Okay, this plank has got all this stuff peeling off. And I bet you that this whole plank was saturated in oil. It would have, because this is all is peeling. You sort of go, why is it peeling? Well, it's probably that whole plank is saturated in engine oil or something like that. And it's just gone really, really deep into the grain and there it is. So that would probably be why that's as it is. Okay, now this is ready for finishing. And you can finish this with anything you like. We believe it's, uh, there's an ideal finish for it, that of course we make, called moisturizer. But we want to show you the moisturizer a little different today. Now, this is feeling really good, this is just like silk. This is so nice. And when you go and chuck plastic over it, seem to lose something. So, let me what have I got here? Okay. Here we have our ordinary, our normal moisturizer. And here we have an empty bottle. And here we have some reducer. What is reducer? Reducer is basically the stuff that's in the moisturizer to give it its viscosity. And when you're doing a floor, 
you've got to be practical with the floor. You don't want to be um, spending your whole life looking after the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce our normal moisturiser by half. So I've got half a bottle of this, and half a bottle of the reducer, and I'm just going to pour a bit of that in. So if you buy our moisturiser and want it for a floor, we'll supply it reduced for you. If you want floor moisturiser, we'll basically thin it down for you. Now it's all compatible with our flushing and all that side of things. Hopefully that won't fall over and that'll go viral, won't it? So, 50% moisturizer, 50% reducer, which is basically solvent that's made for the uh, moisturizer. And if you that will push aside. So that's now sprayable moisturizer. It's sprayable before, but it goes on too thick and it takes too much drama to look after. So what we do is we take our, our thin down moisturizer. So it's still the same stuff, it's just thinner. Now you can spray this on with a Weed sprayer if you want, you can use whatever sort of sprayer you want. This is the one I've got here with me for our demo. Um, so, in it goes, and now you have sprayable moisturizer. But normally when you put moisturizer on, you will see us brush it on good and thick and all that sort of thing. But on a floor, you've just created this mammoth job for yourself. So, so what is moisturizer for people who have not, never seen it? It's a blend of gum, oil, and wax. It's like skincare for timber. And um, it, it, it feeds in, um, and it's unbelievable. The, over by that door there, that you know, famous diamond door, that's all moisturized. But that was slapped on super thick, let to feed, and then we buffed off a couple of days later any surplus. But with a, a floor, this is what we do. So, like I say, it could be in a weed sprayer, but you want to just mist it. You don't want to flood it. Important, this. Don't flood. No flood, just mist. Then let it let it feed. Now you don't have to. Um, hang on, I'll show you one thing first. We have a few tools that we've collected over the years, and one of them is this. This is our I call it my sh stringy mop. Got a few dust things on it. Okay, this is a cotton. Um, um, polishing head and so on the floor you'd mist it on you'd give it a little bit of time to um, soak in and then you would I've got a handheld version of it so imagine that's on that's my end of the pole and you just literally go over the surface and you just Polish it, but you wouldn't do it quite so fast. You'd leave it on. You might leave it on for an hour or two, something like that. Leave it overnight if you can, um, and then it's easy to polish. It's easy to get the the stringy mop, and it's easy to go over. Um, so that makes a piece of cake. Now there is nowhere near enough moisturiser in this floor at this point. Okay. Now in that course of the afternoon or whatever, you can. Absolutely, as you see it, fully absorb in. Just, again, a light mist. Don't, don't flood. And it'll just grab it, drag it in. Um, another way, if you're like the more mechanical ways, get, you can go to some of the hardware's now, and if you've got those um, drill sets that have exchangeable batteries 
um, you can get these polishing heads that the battery fits onto. Uh, this is an electric one, so check this out. So this is burnishing it up, gets a bit of heat going with the friction. You may have seen this being used on a dining table video that we did. You can just hear people saying, on my floor. Well, sometimes people don't have massive big floors and they are happy to do this. Okay, so that's that. And again, you just keep an eye on it. And if it needs, you, for the first few days, it's just going to drink and drink and drink until it won't drink anymore. But if you put on thick moisturizer with the brush, it becomes a real mammoth um, buffing job. And it's, um, you find you're walking it around with the socks and things, it's, it's better to put on small amounts and let the floor acclimatize to it and all that sort of thing. And, and it's really, it then becomes a really easy floor to look after. So what we've got here is a rustic surface. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, and that's fine. Um, if, you, if you love the rustic, I love the rustic. If you've got the right type of environment, this just looks amazing. And when you consider that to that, it's a massive change. And if you were just on a Sunday and decided you wanted to create a, um, big, a big square coffee table, then you know, I don't know what they're worth, they're worth lots, but not with this. Now, um, I was going to talk to you about maintenance, okay? So you've got your floor, and it's in, and you've got this done. Um, you can wash this with a, um, uh, get some water with a small amount of um, detergent, just a drop or two, and then you get like a stringy, one of those long um, uh, mops, and you just slot it around, and then, we have another little toy for floors. We call this a blue gripper head. Yeah, wow, isn't that clever? Um, we get our grip pad, you just put that onto there, and you've, you've put your, um, and sometimes what I do is, it might be that I've just got a little puff of moisturizer, I don't want to put a detergent on it, because when you get a detergent on it, it pulls out moisturizer. So, a little puff of this, and then, so that cat spew can now it just breaks up and then you can um, get like a, a squeegee, one of those um, um, ones for the, for the shower, I've got a, a big one and you can then just um, squeegee off goo and stuff. So they're really easy to look after, you've got to, I'm pouring a lot of info in here here. But the bottom line is you've got to look after your floor one way or another. Now, what can you expect with a floor that's moisturized like this? Well, first of all, if you sand your floor, do not moisturize it. A sanded floor is, is um, too spongy, you've, you've killed, you've, you've removed all that hardened layer I talked about before, and you're better to um, use a hardening oil or a polyurethane, something like that. Um, this floor, we say there is heaps of hardness in the outer grain, so take advantage of it, and this is ideal. We had, personally, an English Mastiff dog, and his big claws would skid around and all that. Perfect on this type of floor. Had a client at a Wangarei, I had a Shetland pony, and the horse came inside on this floor. Um, and it was ideal again, because you just give it a wash and all that and a new mark just goes into the old mark. This used to be in a lot of um, bars down in Christchurch before the earthquake in the, on the strip where a lot of floors, um, our wonderful youth would have a shot, smash the glass promptly onto the ground and the new polyurethane floor would last one evening and they rocked on to the idea of going through at the end of each night giving it a puff with some, um, with some thinned down moisturizer and then away they went. But we developed a, a little trick for those bigger commercial ones. I'm going to show you before we finish off. And so you stay with your arm, Arthur, and I will bring it to you. Okay. 
Okay. Check this out. This is an 18 inch commercial polishing machine. Um, and this disc that I've chucked on the ground there is one of those plastic scourers, but not like our ones where it's got a grit. This is uh, non gritty and it's got a bit of gurn already onto the floor. So you put some detergent, say, onto the floor. You've um, the the um, party with a bit more, it's got a bit dirty, a light um, puffing of detergent on the ground, and flop that onto there. I'm going to really trick to this. You can buy these new for around a grand 1500, or you can buy them online um, second hand. And watch this. Now it takes a little bit of skill to get it right, otherwise it sort of zips off, but once you've got it, got it right. Now, if you've got a, a commercial property, you can put the moisturizer on and basically buff it into the floor with this. This is a, as long as you've got a pad that hasn't got grit in it, that's all I do. So I'll polish off the paint on that earlier. And then, Got to learn how to drive them. Off that comes there, and then this. What I do is I have like a square tray with a bit of uh, water detergent in it. Just leave it soaking. The next day, give it a squirt with a hose, and good to go. So that's a bit of the commercial. So this is a bit of a full-on session. We've got stripping your sort of typical villa type floor um, where we've gone from there to there this is sort of what most people's um, houses and the old villas and that sort of thing will be like in the bungalows um, that's all pretty standard fare and as you saw it's sort of around probably three four square meters stripped per liter and that's all good we just uh, show that we don't do easy things every time we we like to pick some real good hard gnarly ones so this one here is the other end of the of the scale but if you've got a floor like that, if you've um, bought an old brick warehouse and you've got floors like this and you want it to, to look like that, then it's yours to be had. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah, no dust. Crushed grain board. Yep. So, hope you really liked it. And thanks for hanging in if you, if you did. And any questions, just let us know. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.